In the history of modern aviation development, which spans over a hundred years, countless scientists have been exploring the mysteries of flight and proposing various flight theories. This has given rise to numerous peculiar-looking aircraft, such as the Donnell Aerodyne E-1 that we are introducing today. It is a special aircraft that does not have fixed wings or rotor structures. The origin of the Donnell E-1 can be traced back to the aviation design master Liepisch, who, although relatively less famous, has definitely influenced the entire aviation industry. He has been involved in the design of famous models such as the Mi-163 during World War II. Lippisch himself worked at the Zeppelin Airship Company when he was young and later participated in Germany's secret aviation revival after World War I. Unlike other designers, Lippisch had a special fondness for non-mainstream designs such as tailless aircraft and delta-wing aircraft. After World War II, Lippisch, as one of the targets of Operation Paperclip, was brought to the United States to continue his research and development in aviation technology and had a significant impact on famous companies like Convair. At the same time, Lippisch went further down the path of non-mainstream designs. In the 1950s, he proposed a more radical wingless aerodyne aircraft, which was essentially a vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. Lippisch proposed various concepts, including interceptor, bomber, and fighter aircraft models. To validate his ideas, he designed and built an unmanned experimental aircraft called the Lippisch Aerodyne. The Lippisch Aerodyne is an unmanned experimental aircraft. Its front half resembles a flying barrel, with a tail wing at the rear to adjust its flight attitude. Inside the aircraft's duct, there is a propeller driven by an engine. The generated airflow does not directly propel the aircraft for gliding, but instead, at the rear exit, there is a deflection wing that changes the direction of the airflow, providing the aircraft with the power needed for vertical takeoff and forward flight. Its barrel-shaped fuselage should also provide some lift. Lippisch's ideas influenced many design companies in Europe and the United States at that time, especially when people were pursuing short takeoff and landing technology. However, Lippisch was already old and in poor health at that time, making it difficult for him to continue with high-intensity work. The Dornier Aircraft Company was clearly impressed by Lippisch's ideas and used them as the basis for designing and building the Dornier Aerodyne E-1. In comparison, it has a scaled-down ducted structure and is powered by a 370-horsepower 1MTU 6022A3 engine. From the appearance, the main propulsive airflow generated by the engine still passes through the deflection wing at the rear of the duct, seemingly with a small portion transmitted to the rear through a tail-boom-like structure. The power of the duct nozzle seems to be mainly used for takeoff, landing, and forward flight of the aircraft, while the airflow at the end of the tail boom can be directed by the deflection wing, allowing the aircraft to make horizontal adjustments. This is uncertain. The Dornier E-1 was developed in 1968 and made its first flight on September 18, 1972. The flight tests were successful, and there were plans to develop it into reconnaissance aircraft and other models. However, the project was abandoned in November of the same year. Compared to conventional fixed-wing aircraft or helicopters, this design is not only more complex but also less safe. Once the engine fails, it will result in a crash, unlike fixed-wing aircraft that can still glide and potentially save itself. The Dornier E-1 weighs 435 kilograms, with a length of 5.5 meters, a width of 1.9 meters, and a fan diameter of 1.1 meters.